Hello Titans, it's Mr. Spilker, and this is Chapter 7, Section 5, and this is Part 1. Part 1 is graphing a linear inequality. Part 2 will be graphing a system of linear inequalities. So our objective here for this teaching video is to graph a linear inequality. And you're going to notice that graphing a linear inequality is very similar to graphing a linear equation which was a big focus for us in part one of this unit and also back in unit number five. Let's get into the lesson. All right, tonight we're jumping straight into the steps for chapter seven, section five, part one. Step one of graphing a linear equality is to make sure it's in slope-intercept form. Just like graphing a linear equation, we want to make sure it's in slope-intercept form. So make sure, uh, make sure the inequality is in the form of y is your inequality symbol mx plus b. Number two, change the inequality to an equation and graph. So in other words, guys, step two is just picture it just like it were an equation and graph it. And by that I mean plot your y-intercept and then mark off your slope. Now, step three is what's going to be new. And this is what you really need to make sure you have down into your notes. If the inequality is a less than or a greater than sign, then the boundary line is going to be dashed, or in other words, dotted. If the inequality is a less than or equal to, or a greater than or equal to, then that line is going to be solid. So dashed line if it does not have the or equal to. Solid if it does. So that's very similar to, think back when we were solving inequalities uh, back in the fourth unit, and we talked about making circles open or closed. This is just like that. The open circle would be like a dashed line and the closed circle would be a solid line. So make sure you have that down in your notes. That's very, very important. That takes us now to step number four. Step number four is of uh, graphing a linear inequality is going to be the shading. Just like we shaded to the left or shaded to the right with our uh, inequalities that we solved back in unit number four, we're going to have some shading here, and we're going to shade above or below the line. So to see what side to shade, there's really two ways to do it. Some teachers will tell you to pick a point. Just pick any point that does not lie on the line and test it. If it's true, then you shade that side of the line. If it's false, you shade the opposite side. Or probably the easier way, which is the way that myself and Mr. Simpson and the number one ranked math teacher, Mr. Wills, uh, have taught this, is that if it's greater than, or greater than, or equal to, then you shade above the rooftop. If it's less than, or less than or equal to, then shade under the rooftop. So when you draw that line, just think of it like a rooftop. So if that's my line right there, and my symbol was greater than or equal to, then I would shade above the rooftop. And right now, with the time of year approaching where Santa is going to be visiting us. I actually went to Shadow Lake this weekend and told him what I was, was hoping to receive. Um, a new Huffy white heat bike. Uh, this bike's pretty sweet. It's got a fender and some streamers. and I won't go into that. But anyways, um, you, should be, you should understand the rooftop concept. If it's greater than or greater than or equal to, then you shade above. If it's less than or less than or equal to, then shade under the rooftop. And I'll give you some examples to further explain this here in a second. So make sure you have this down into your notes, Titans. Very, 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 very important. All right, an example here, and you could draw a sketch of this. Many students right now say, okay, I got this. I'm shutting it off. Don't do that. Do some of these examples along with me. So we're going to go ahead and graph the line. Y is greater than or equal to negative 3 halves X plus 1. So this is already in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to go ahead and graph the boundary line. So I'm going to start with my y-intercept, my starting spot, which is a positive 1. So I'm going to go ahead on the y-axis and plot a point at positive 1. And then from there, I'm going to mark off my slope. And it's negative slope, so I go down 3, right 2, down 3, right 2, down 3, right 2. And then that allows me to draw my boundary line. And since this is a greater than or equal to problem, that means my line is going to be solid, solid line. And now I need to decide my uh, shading. Now what they did is they chose a test point and they plugged that test point in. Um, in this video, they chose, as you can see, they chose the test point. <clears throat> it looks to me like they chose the test point 0, 0. Um, I mean, you can choose any test point and plug it in. 
and see if it's true or false. The easier way I'm telling you here is just to simply follow our rule. If it's in slope intercept form, remember if it's greater than or greater than or equal to, you're going to shade above the rooftop. And I wish I could spell O A B O V E above the rooftop. And that would be this side, if that's the rooftop. Santa would be on top of the rooftop, right on this side. So we'd shade that side. So that's our solution. Now what this means is that all ordered pairs that are in this shaded region right here, all of those ordered pairs are solutions to that inequality. Alright, we'll jump into a, another example here. Y is less than 6. Um, if we have Y and Y only, Y is always Ying down. So in this scenario, since it's just a less than sign, it's going to be a dashed line. So as you can see, we made a dashed line there. And then since it's less than, that means we're going to shade under the rooftop. And in here, it's a horizontal line. So we will just shade under. That means that all of these ordered pairs that are in the shaded region are solutions. And as you notice, all of these ordered pairs have a y value that is less than 6. That is example number two. Wise move to go ahead and draw a sketch of that into your notes. Alright, Titans, last example tonight. The problem with this example is it's not in slope intercept form. So I'm going to put it in slope intercept form by following two easy steps. I'm going to take 4x and move it over. So when 4x changes sides, it changes signs. Now it's a negative 4x. Now I'm not done, I must divide everything by a negative 2. Whenever you divide everything by negative with inequalities, what's the rule? Yep, good memory, Titans. You must flip that inequality. So now it's y is greater than negative 4 divided by 2 would be 2x, and 7 divided by negative 2 would be 3 and a half, and that's a negative 3 and a half. So I plot my y-intercept at negative 3 and a half. I rise 2 and run 1, rise 2 and run 1. I'm going to have a dashed line, as you can see. And then since it's greater than, I shade above the rooftop. So I guess the, the thing that is important for Algebra 1 students to understand off of this example is just remembering the rule that when you divide by negative, you must flip your inequality. That also applies here with linear inequalities. All right, Titans, that's our uh, teaching video for tonight. Hopefully that helps you understand linear inequalities. Uh, make sure you fill out the feedback form uh, that's on the class website and come ready to go to class tomorrow to put this um, into action. We'll answer your questions, and we will have another great day where we win the day in algebra class. Stay classy, Titans.